Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Yesterday, Ubiquiti released the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 in wall to the general public. This AP has been in early access for quite a long time. So in this video, I'm gonna replace my in wall HD with this Wi-Fi 6 in wall. There are a few differences with the mounting, which are actually an improvement. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You could find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel and are buying Ubiquity gear already, I do have an affiliate link, which I'll post in the description below. First, as always, we're going to see what comes in the box, and then we'll see the different sizes and the different brackets for the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 in wall and the in-wall HD. And this is the Wi-Fi 6 in-wall. It's made of aluminum and plastic. The backplate is made of aluminum and it's a lot harder than the old in-wall HD. Also, this is all one piece. In the in-wall HD, this face cover would come off. I like this design a lot better. On the back, we have our PoE in, and then we have our four ports on the bottom. These are all gigabit ports, but port one, we have a PoE out. So if you need to power a camera or maybe a VoIP phone, and then we have a reset button on the bottom. The next thing that comes in the box is this mounting bracket, which is made of aluminum, which is a lot more sturdy than the old plastic bracket. And the last thing that comes in the box is this release key and four screws. They don't include any wall plugs. Typically you'd use a drywall ring or electrical box with your CAT6 in there and these screws would just screw right in. Now here's a side by side with the in-wall HD and the Wi-Fi 6 in-wall. This is the in-wall HD and it is a little bit smaller than the Wi-Fi 6 in-wall. Also, like I mentioned, with the in-wall HD, we were able to take this lid off, and then we would mount it to our mounting bracket. With the Wi-Fi 6 in-wall, all we need to do is put the mounting bracket on and then click down. And now that is stuck onto the mounting bracket, and to release it, we just get the release key and then push down in the slot. This design works for me a lot better than the old design as that faceplate was just kind of annoying. Now let's go back to the computer and look at some of the specs. And that was our first look at the Wi-Fi 6 in wall and I really like the design that they went with. So for the specs, we have high efficiency four stream Wi-Fi 6 technology. On the five gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 band, we have four x four multi-user MIMO with OF DMA. On the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 band, we have two x two multi-user MIMO. It has those four gigabit RJ45 ports, including the one PoE out at 802.3 AF. And this Wi-Fi 6 access point is managed by our Unify network controller, and we must be at least at version 6.4.52. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring the camera downstairs. We're gonna take Take out my old in-wall HD and then put in this Wi-Fi 6 in-wall. First, we need to take the in-wall HD off of the wall. When I originally installed this, I just put a couple screws in the drywall. We'll end up putting a drywall ring in for the Wi-Fi 6 in-wall. Next is to install the drywall ring, which is just a metal bracket with a couple drywall screws. The outlet hole was a little big, but the Wi-Fi 6 in wall will cover it. Now I'm going to re-terminate the CAT cable. I'm using T568A, but you could use T568B as long as you're using one of the standards and we're putting an RJ45 end on. After terminating the cable, I test it with my NetAlley LinkRunner AT2000 and we're seeing a gigabit throughput. Now I get one of my helpers to hand me some tools to mount the Wi-Fi 6 AP. With the mounting bracket, we push the CAT6 cable through the middle and then we mount it onto the drywall ring. And the last thing we do, we attach the CAT6 cable to the back of the Wi-Fi 6 access point and then put it on the mount. So the Wi-Fi 6 in wall is now installed and the last thing we need to do to get it up and running is to adopt it into our controller. We can see the U6 in wall right here and it's ready to adopt. So we're going to click that and then we're going to press adopt device. So this will adopt it into our network controller and grab all the configuration that we currently already have in place. So all of our Wi-Fi SSIDs and it will upgrade the firmware of the Wi-Fi 6 in wall. All right, the Wi-Fi 6 in wall is now adopted into my Ubiquiti controller and it will show you the exact same thing as every other access point. We have our model, MAC address, IP address, and firmware version. We also have our clients and guests, which there are nobody on there right now. We have our history, general, uplink, wired, what switch we're going back to. We have air stats, downlink, AP group, and then WLAN. Our WLAN will show us all the BSSIDs 
or the SSIDs that is connected to this access point. We also have this insights tab, which will show us the channel usage. So on our 2.4 gigahertz, it's on auto and we're on channel 11. For our five gigahertz, we're on channel 151. We could also do an RF environment scan you would choose between the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. Now on our settings wheel, we could see the four ports that are on the Wi-Fi 6 in wall, and they're all disconnected because I have nothing plugged in. And this AP is using global AP settings. And you can turn this off so that you could change your radios if you'd like. So my global AP settings, we have 2.4 on the channel width of 20 and then the 5 gigahertz at 40. Now to configure the physical ports on this access point, we need to go to ports and then select which port we wanna edit. Say we wanna edit this PoE port and put it into VLAN. It says the port VLAN service must be enabled on this switch in order to configure the network VLAN. We're gonna click here where it says configure port VLAN. And it will bring us back to the settings under network. We could see VLAN, enable port VLAN, and we're gonna check that off and then press apply changes. Now going back to our ports, we could put this PoE port into my camera VLAN. And doing so, we'll be able to add a G3 Flex or something there. If you were gonna put a VoIP phone there, you could put it into your voice network. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create an SSID just for this access point and do a couple tests. Wi-Fi tests are gonna change in every different environment. Your house or business is gonna be different than mine. So Wi-Fi testing is very difficult to show to people. But I'll show you a couple speed tests and a few iPerf tests. The testing is now done for the Wi-Fi 6 in wall. And I did a few different tests. We did speed test and iPerf test. And then I changed the channel width on the 5 gigahertz to be 80. Doing so will give you more bandwidth and more speed, but can cause interference, which may make your Wi-Fi unreliable. I prefer reliability over speed. First, let's take a look at the access point when it's just on its default. So the 5 gigahertz is on channel width 40. In my office, which is one floor above the access point, the access point is on my main floor, and my internet connection is one gig by one gig, we are getting 221 megabits down. We are getting 142 up. And on the same floor as the access point, we are getting 383 down and then 330 up. In the basement, which is one floor below the access point, we are getting 342 down and then 48.1 up. For our iPerf test, in my office, we are getting 274 down and 137 up. On the main floor, we are getting 378 down and 289 up. And in the basement, we are getting 342 down and then 73 up. I then changed the channel width to 80 and these are the speed test results for it. In my office, we are getting 322 down and 162 up. On my main floor, we are getting 620 down and 470 up. And then in the basement, 517 down and 230 up. There was quite a difference in speed when we did change it to the wider channel width. Our iPerf test in my office, we are getting 263 down and 124 up. In the main floor, we are getting 705 down and 487 up. And then in the basement, 547 down and 216 up. So that's gonna be it for this Wi-Fi 6 in-wall video. I do really like these in-wall access points. I've deployed a whole bunch of the in-wall HDs in hotels. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you're buying any Ubiquiti gear and you'd like to support this channel, I do have that affiliate link. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.